This video contains selected clips from a typical two-hour demonstration about making wood turn jewelry. We usually do this via a two-way, real-time video call with the wood turning club. The audience can see and hear us, we can see and hear them, so it's quite interactive. So let's watch a bit of a session we did with a group in New Mexico. Let me uh, sort of introduce the two of us, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Lauren for uh, a couple of thoughts. We are best known probably for our jewelry and for um, things like shaving brushes. And I'll show you a little bit about, about the work because the more you sort of understand where we're going with this demonstration, the, the more the different techniques will start to make sense. So I am in our basement shop. I do not have wood paneling behind me. Uh, my my uh, actual shop looks like this. And so I, I don't know how many of you have a green screen behind your lathe, but uh, I find it very uh, handy to be able to uh, look at a particular camera and then I can actually put myself into any of the, uh, any of the pictures. Lauren is upstairs. I'm in the basement of our two-story home and Lauren is upstairs in her, uh, in her studio. Lauren, why don't you talk a little bit about, about your approach to wood turning and why you became a wood turner? Okay, well, my approach to wood turning is a little different than most. I've actually turned a, a couple of bowls, but I've never had a real desire to do that. I've made um, uh, vases and, and pens and stuff like that, but uh, my love is using the wood as canvas. I'm a painter. I, I love to paint and draw and, and embellish and use all sorts of interesting materials. And I find that the less figured wood, like maple or, or uh, some of the other woods that don't have a lot of grain, are really terrific to embellish. So I like to do small objects um, like spheres and br uh, brushes and, uh, and jewelry. Um, on maple, and uh, that's my whole thing. It's canvas. Wood is canvas to me. I'm going to show you a couple of, uh, of pictures so you get a, a, a sense of what it is that we do. Like, let's just talk a moment about safety. I want to be as safe as possible. In our shop, whenever the lathe is turned on, Lauren and I have our full protective gear on, not just when we're sanding. You know, I understand that this is not the way most people are, but this is the way we are. If the lathe is on, the dust collector is on, and, the, um, and our respirator helmets are on. When we first started doing pendants, one of the things that was interesting to us was to work with very, very interesting types of wood. Uh, this is a piece of Buckeye Burl, and it's a beautiful piece of wood. It looks like stone. And when you have something that's as beautiful as this, you want to stay out of the way. You don't want to put beads and coves and all this kind of stuff on it. It's not about you. In this case, it's about the piece of wood. This was a nice piece of paduk. And uh, there's a piece of red and blue jasper in the middle. And there was a very small uh, bead turned around the, the outside. So these uh, uh, eccentric, we could use it, to, we could fill it with stuff. Now, one of the things that, that I'll show you is this the technique to do multi-axis turning uh, using this sort of special uh, jig. And in this case, the arcs were scribed into the wood on the lathe, and then I filled it with uh, inlace. Lauren, why don't you talk about uh, less is more? Oh, okay. Well, do you know the old expression, Less is more that doesn't apply to embellishment in this case. You're looking at a really small piece that people are going to hold in their hands and it has to be in really wonderful design kind of thing. So the more texture you get into it, the better it looks. So in this case, it's more is more. So the little dots enhanced the wood burning and the ink enhanced the wood burning as well and it just all came together so you'll see when I start doing the other pendant 
Uh, it starts out really simply, and the more you add to it, the more texture it has, and it really looks good. This was one that we did uh, for the um, for the first state group in Delaware. The one that she's going to do tonight will be kind of a, a hybrid between something like that and something like this. She'll probably work in these colors. And Lauren takes some of this same uh, embellishment and uh, applies it to other things. Like this was for the women in turning auction at the uh, Pittsburgh uh, AAW uh, symposium. We do shaving brushes, so she'll uh, uh, apply uh, archival ink to the shaving brushes. And working with shaving brushes is a unique challenge because let's face it, uh, shaving environment is very hostile to wood. Lauren's gonna show a little bit about the tools that you use. How to put jewelry together. <laughs> right, this is, this is all about connections. Lauren, why don't you explain what you've got going there? Okay, I've got a little rig over here. Let's see if we can go out. It's portable and I take it places. And I have a setup for doing the pendants. And then I have a little setup here for doing the brushes. So let's talk about some tools, some of which you may be familiar with, some of which may be a little new to you. The tool that I'm going to be using the most uh, today or tonight is a thing called a pendant backer plate. This attaches to the lathe on a threaded mandrel. So you'll see I've got the, uh, the pendant backer plate mounted on a mandrel into my lathe. I'm just going to cut off a piece of tape. And what's nice about this tape is it's cloth back. And it, it, you don't fight this tape. This tape is really lovely. You just make a little slice on it, peel it up. Now, this tape is pressure sensitive. It's very important. And so what you need is you need something to press up against it because it's activated by the pressure. And what I did is I wound up making these little uh, jam blocks that fit over my uh, tailstock here over my live center and you take it and press it tight for a little bit and while you're getting everything else ready so i'm just running my my uh, chisel towards the uh, towards the headstock just trying to get rid of uh, of the uh, flats and so now, when people tell you that uh, carbide tools are just scrapers, well, yeah, if you're just scraping, but if you turn it up on edge, you're kind of using it like a skew or a shear cut. Okay, we're starting to add some color to it now, and I added a little bit of shading. I don't know how well you can see it, but it makes things pop a little bit. So there's some, I used a brush that has some gray looks like that and it's shaded in here and it's making things pop a little bit so what happens if you say oh I cannot draw I've never been able to draw I'm not sure I can do this well it's not probably not true you probably drawn in notebooks and doodled and did some really neat kind of stuff but if you look around, there are all of these different patterns everywhere. There's patterns in the trees, in the leaves, in your carpet, on the floor, in the wood behind me. Um, just all sorts of patterns. And all you need to do, and what a lot of people do, is start with a grid. So if I had a grid, you can just start making a design. You can add little crescents here and it's all sort of repetitious so if I put this over here then this is going to go like this all right that's close enough maybe I'll come back just a little bit all right again spin it around and start Coming in, you got to be very gentle with this because it's, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, turning a, a bowl with voids in it because you're turning air for a good portion of the time. All I'm doing 
is doing the same little pieces over and over and over again, just around and around and around. It's kind of zen. It's very nice. It's, 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 it's a nice feeling doing it that way. Um, and it goes fairly quickly. And I'm just putting these little lines in here. And all of a sudden, my red is much richer. Lauren, do you find with the inks that you use, you have to wait for one to dry before you add the next one, or can it go on immediately? No, it's been going on immediately. So I'm going to use a little beading tool here. So I'm going to come in and just go in slightly. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting into it, and I'm rocking left and right just a little bit to sort of round over the top of the bead. What we've got here is a, a bead that is inset into the wood. Now for the inside, I want it to be domed slightly. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to try to make a, a, an arc. So by taking away all the material that was not the bead, I now have a raised bead. Face shield down, dust collector on, spin it, make sure we're not losing it. And now, I'm just working on the inside here. Just trying to thin it out a little bit. Again, the round tool makes pretty quick work of this. Oh, I can, I can I see you. I just wanted to show uh, uh, the group uh, all these uh, people with gray beards, like, like mine, <laughs> uh, uh, staring at a computer screen. It is absolutely compelling video. So jewelry is basically all about connections. So it's how you connect beads. There are a million different kinds of beads in every different kind of configuration um, and every material. And you can make your own beads. Uh, doing wood beads are really lovely. Um, and the way that you put them together are with these things over here that are called findings. Can you see that or should I go up higher? There we go. These are things like clasps and jump rings and, and um, uh, magnetic things and and that's how and then there's chain tell us a little bit about the wire what's it called and properties what's the it wire mean? called okay there are lots of different kinds of wire but it's mostly bead stringing wire and they come in different uh, sizes and uh, strengths so the um, the higher the number the the uh, thinner the wire. Right. Now, and the thing that Lauren's going to show you here, and this is very important, is you do not pull it apart. And then what you do is you push with one hand, pull with the other, and so, it opens. Yeah, so you're just twisting it open to you're make a twist, gap. Because you need to put it back. <laughs> and then you just take your jump ring, uh, your uh, lobster clasp or whatever finding you want to put in the end, yeah, so we, we need to wrap up. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll, we'll send around all the resources to all our members. Okay. And uh, it's a wonderful presentation. Very informative. That's well, one, one of the things, I thank you, I thank you. One of the things that you might uh, want to consider, and, and we, we leave this open to you if you'd like, is if you want in a month or two, uh, we can do just a little uh, half hour talk back session because some of you will actually try doing some of these things and we'd like to, to uh, have some additional follow-up questions or you may uh, uh, think of some questions that didn't occur to you tonight. But that's the advantage of doing these remotes is that uh, we can have a little 15, 20 minute chat um, uh, just before your next, uh, your next presentation and uh, answer whatever questions come up. So I, I leave that to you as to whether or not you want to do that. You know where to find us, and, and it's actually been a, a pleasure. Lauren? 
Yes, it's it's been wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm sure after you've had a chance to try some of this stuff, you'll have lots of questions. Yeah, and and the and you can send us info at zenreich.com. It's also on the uh, on the resource sheet.